Hi everybody, it's cool to be here, even if in this uh, special format. And, but the time is uh, what it is. Uh, so, uh, well, today I want to talk uh, about Redis 6, the new version of Redis that was uh, released uh, um, a couple of uh, days uh, ago. And I want to talk about it just using my terminal. Um, so, this is the list of uh, Redis 6 commits, just the description of the commit. And if I sort, uh, let's check how many they are. Okay, 1000 something. If I sort these commits messages by lexicographically, I can already have many hints about what's new inside this release. So there are ACL, a lot of commits, uh, client-side caching, cluster manager in Ready CLI, expire uh, algorithm modified, uh, many fixes, uh, even a Gopher implementation inside. Uh, uh, this is the LCS algorithm, which is basically um, and it's, it's called the longest common subsequence algorithm. It, it is used often in order to um, uh, compare uh, genetic sequences, for example, of RNA of viruses. And you can uh, do interesting visualization. For example, I used this new Redis command in order to uh, map the difference between uh, the most related uh, bat virus to, uh, to SARS-CoV-2 uh, and SARS-CoV-2 itself. And this is the map of differences. The blue part is the um, nucleo, um, uh, it's the, basically the genetic information that are the same, the nu nucleotide that are the same letter. And the red part is the differences. Here, around this area here, where you see this noise, there is the spike protein of the virus, which often changes more rapidly, accumulates more mutations. Basically, the idea is that what happened uh, in the world is too much to don't have any trace inside Redis 6 that was developed uh, during this period. So, software is a human factor and something should remain about all this. Uh, then there is the new lolboot. So every time you see a Redis 6 instance, if you type lolboot, you will see this. Oh, every run is different, right? It's dynamically generated. Oh, no, no the lolboot of version 6 also can get a version parameter in order to show you the past lolboots. So this is the old one, and this is the current one. Uh, so there are many, many stuff in Redis 6. In the module subsystem, there is a lot of stuff, and also here, replication improvements, precise timeouts, RDBR faster to load, there is a new protocol if you, that if you want to use it, that is more semantical, it's back, backward compatible with the past, but if you want, you can use a more semantical pro protocol in Redis now. Redis benchmark now supports cluster and threads, a lot of things. So uh, the idea is, uh, is Redis becoming too, too much complex? Let's do a quick check. How many lines of code we have? Okay, I think we are still uh, small. And uh, what's good is that we have a great deal of comments as well. There are files where basically the number of lines of comment and the line of code are almost the same. Uh, but let's check about these new features. So, uh, is ACL a big file? No, it's just uh, the minimum required in order to have a viable system and still with a lot of comments. Or even more interesting, tracking which is the new feature of Redis, which implements client-side caching, and I want to talk about this, especially in these uh, 10 minutes that, uh, that I have, or whatever. Uh, well, tracking is uh, a very small feature. It's just 300 lines of code, and uh, a bit more comments. 
but it could be the most significant feature of Ready 6 perhaps because it, it can change a lot of things. So let's check what tracking is. Uh, so tracking is basically the server side support for a, a protocol that is called client side caching. The idea is that sometimes there are certain Redis keys that you want to memorize in the client side because uh, like imagine a social network where a user creates some post. I'm going to the C. Okay. Uh, since this user is very, very popular, Redis is, will get a lot of requests to get this key again, again, again. However, this kind of information maybe can change from time to time because the, the user may edit it. But uh, uh, even if I serve for 100 milliseconds the older version, uh, it's not a big deal. I mean, uh, if I get uh, notified immediately after, I uh, flash the copy that I have uh, uh, in, in, in the client side, and that's not a problem. So basically the idea is this, this request, this key gets, gets requested again and again and again. What about having a copy of this key inside the application memory? So every client will have a copy of uh, post one, two, three, four. And when it changes for some reason, there is some notification that I send to the, all the, the, the clients uh, and this, uh, the, the clients will remove this information that they have in memory. This is very important because uh, even if Redis is fast, crossing the uh, network boundaries between the two, two computers, one thing is to read from the memory of the, the computer, the other is to read from the fast memory of another computer, but there is the network inside. And this network will cost a lot of things, will cost latency, will cost the fact that in order to process the I.O., the two computers will have to use a lot of CPU time. So if you think that Redis can, in general, make your applications faster, you can think that client-side caching as the next step. So part of the working set, the, the key space more accessed inside Redis, can be directly inside your application memory. And uh, that's the point. However, this works as long as you have a very reliable mechanism in order to notify uh, who can have a copy of this key that the key was changed. So, normally people did this already with Redis, and uh, when they modify the post, the application modifies the post, what you do is usually to publish in some uh, channel uh, the, the name of the of the key. So everybody is listening for this channel with pops up and the key gets removed. However, this protocol has two problems. One is that um, basically at every set you have to remember to also uh, also send a publish. And the publish will also use uh, more bandwidth, more CPU time in the Redis side and so forth. Moreover, there is another problem, uh, which is uh, uh, in this way there is no selectivity. Uh, basically, maybe you don't have this information cached in certain clients, so the clients that don't have this information maybe don't want to receive the invalidation message. For this reason, uh, Redis 6 introduces this uh, tracking feature that uh, takes care of these kind of things. So, let's see how, how it works. Uh, normally I use um, a side client in order to, a side connection in order to receive the invalidation messages. Uh, so let's see what's the idea of this uh, connection. Uh, it's 14. So to enable tracking, I, I just use the client uh, command of Redis, uh, client tracking on, uh, redirect to uh, the connection number 14. 
Uh, and when I do that, what happens is that I subscribe here to this channel. And here I, shall, I, I should receive the invalidation messages. So for example, if I change post one, two, three, four, I don't get nothing. But if I request post one, two, three, four, now Redis uh, believes that I can have a copy because I requested it. And at this point, uh, if uh, the post is modified, now I get an invalidation message. So uh, Redis sent me, please invalidate uh, the copy that you can have of this key. So basically, in the default uh, mode, because there are multiple modes that you can use, client tracking remembers for each client which key uh, which set of keys it could, could have memorized. And the way it assumes that you, the client can have a copy is because it uh, used to fetch this key using a read-only command. However, it is possible to use also uh, an opt-in, opt-out uh, mechanism in order to tell exactly the Redis server what keys we are uh, caching. And also there are parameters that you can tune in order to avoid uh, to use too much memory in order to remember which client has which key. But there is a, a, a different mode that you can use with uh, client tracking. So now I disable client tracking and I, and I now enable it again using a different uh, uh, mode. So tracking on, redirect again uh, to uh, client 14 which is still active. However, I want to receive uh, the notification in uh, broadcast mode. Broadcast means that I don't want the server to track what exact keys I fetched. Just give me every key that changed in the server. I want a notification, but only for certain prefixes. So prefix uh, post and prefix counter. Okay, it was enabled. So now, if any client, including myself, performs an increment in uh, uh, counter123, uh, I get a notification message about this change. Uh, also, if uh, post uh, is set to a different thing, I get a notification about this, that. But if an unrelated key is modified, I get nothing here. So basically, uh, client-side uh, tracking can work in two ways. One is very selective, but consumes uh, more memory in the server uh, side and consumes less bandwidth because it avoids sending useless messages. Uh, another mode is where instead we trade server memory, don't, so don't, there is no need to remember which client requested which key, uh, however, we will send more messages. However, thanks, thanks to this prefixes trick, we can be somewhat selective. And uh, well, this feature may mean for certain applications uh, to have very uh, big speed ups in the fetching of the data. Uh, okay, I want to I want to show another thing, uh, which is the implementation of all this. So tracking.c. This is the file. It's three hundred lines of code. It uses a. It can be so small because it uses a, a lot of things that are already inside Redis. Uh, the fact that the modifi modification of the keys are already tra uh, tracked because of watch transaction. You can do watch multi exec and if something changed, uh, basically in the watched, uh, watched keys, the transaction will file. Maybe you know this feature. So we can build on things that we have. We have Radix trees in order to have uh, prefixes uh, and, uh, and so forth. But uh, what's interesting is the entry points. 
uh, of this code inside the Redis code. So I have here disable tracking and enable tracking, which are called just in the client implementation, in the client command implementation. Uh, disable tracking, okay, and then enable tracking. Here is client tracking off or client tracking on. We here we just do the parsing of the command and then everything is inside. Then I have tracking remember keys. I want, given my client that's going to execute a command, if I'm not using tracking in broadcasting mode, I want to remember the, the keys for this client. And uh, if I grab for this one, I find just a single reference in, in, inside the server.c, which is here. Basically in the command execution path, in the call function, that is the core of Redis execution of commands. If the command is read only, and uh, if it's the local caller, let's resolve the real caller of Lua itself. And if tracking is enabled, but not in broadcasting mode, remember the key. So basically, it's extremely simple of the way it is uh, implemented. And also, I need uh, the invalidation part tracking invalidate key. And where this API is called? It is just in expire, of course, uh, uh, in db.c, in signal modified key. So this is the API that Redis already had that is called every time a key is modified, and I handle watch of the transactions here, and now I also handle tracking invalidate key. So as simple as that. Okay, well, uh, I, I, I hope you will enjoy Redis 6. There are so many things, ACL, SSL, uh, IO threading. Uh, uh, there is uh, a number of new modules, uh, APIs, uh, 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 and there is a new expired algorithm, a lot of things. But in general, what, what I want to stress is that Redis is still uh, uh, the simple thing that... Uh, when you download and compile it, it, it looks like a toy, but then it, it can actually solve a, a really interesting problem is if, when the developers apply their creativity in order to use it in the, in the best way. Uh, oh, well, just another thing. Because uh, uh, ACL is required to generate passwords for users and you want this password to be strong, there is a, a gen password command inside Redis. Uh, this gen password uh, works like that. Basically, it uses uh, HMAC SHA uh, 2056 in, uh, uh, in order to generate random bits, uh, concatenating a seed with a counter. Okay? And the seed is obtained by uh, dev random at startup. And uh, it, in, the, in the latest version, it takes an argument, the number of bits that you want. So basically, you can use this command not just to, to generate uh, uh, passwords uh, for Redis itself, but every time you need a unique identifier which is uh, not guessable uh, from the outside and uh, which cannot collide if uh, you request uh, one big enough. And since this is uh, not calling the dev you random every run, but it uses basically uh, it in a counter mode using the HMAC uh, construct. Uh, you can abuse this API and generate uh, all the things that you want. Oh, this is a very small feature, but I, I think it's nice. So I wanted to, to talk uh, about this. Okay, so many thanks for, uh, for watching this, uh, this session. And now there will be many more. Um, Next one uh, should be uh, Alvin Richards, uh, which is our chief, uh, uh, chief product uh, uh, officer. Uh, and uh, have a good conference. Bye.